Hey everyone, this is Carolise and today we're going to be talking about communication skills. So I know this is something many people struggle with, how to improve your communication to make sure you're getting the right message across. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. So don't go anywhere. Come right back. Okay, so as you know, I have been celebrating Game of Thrones, but I'm going to confess to you guys that I am a little bit disappointed and a little bit deflated with what I have seen so far in Game of Thrones season eight. I don't know, seasons one and two and three, they had their problems, but they had quality. Like the storylines had lots of depth. I feel like they've just... They've rushed it and it, it feels rushed, you know what I mean? So I'm just a little bit deflated about that. But anyway, today I want to share with you what I have. You know, every episode, every video, I have something from Game of Thrones that I share with you. So this one is the map of Westeros, right? So you can see all of the different places that are very common and are shown in game of thrones and it's very small i mean it's like that wide but i thought this is so cool i'm gonna frame it and put it up uh, somewhere on my wall or something so another piece of my game of throne memorabilia yeah okay so the topic of this video is communication skills and we're talking about communicating. We're talking about how you get your message across and we're narrowing it down to at work, right? So there's a lot of tips here that you can apply anywhere in your life with your spouse, with your friends, wherever. But for this video, we're talking about communication at work and we're specifically gonna be talking about the business analyst examples of how you can improve your communication so that you can become um, better at what you do, okay? So the first thing we have to realize is that whenever we are talking or even if we're not talking about ourselves, whatever we're saying, we are communicating something about ourselves. And that's not just with oral communication, that's also on your emails, that's your body language. You're always communicating something about yourself, even if you're not talking about yourself. So at work, you're talking about a project, you're talking about some deadlines, you're talking about some meetings and stuff like that. You are still communicating something about yourself. And so one of the things that we have to be conscious of is what are you communicating? What are people gleaning from you? What did they walk away with? We know what you said, but what was the feeling that people walked away with after they communicated with you? So when you're at work, there are three things that you're always communicating. One, I am competent. Or two, I am incompetent or not competent. Or three, I do not have what I need to be competent. Those are the three things that you're always communicating, whether you realize it or not, whether you are conscious of it or not, whether you intended to or not. And that's the trick where many people don't realize that they've said many things about different things, but at the end of the day, their boss walks away feeling like that person's incompetent or boy, this person is really good at their job or yeah, they need something. I need to give them more resources to get their job done properly. So those are the three things that you're always communicating. And the trick is the communication can be explicit or implicit. And implicitly, these are the three things that you're always communicating. You want to make sure that when you communicate with, especially your boss or your coworkers, you always want to give the impression that you are competent. And if you can't do that, then you 
You need something to be competent. So those are the two things that's okay to communicate. You don't want to communicate that I am incompetent. You want to avoid that at all costs, obviously, right? So let's break it down into the two groups, the implicit or the things that is the, the things that are not directly said, but it's what people walk away feeling like and the explicit, which is exactly what you say. So let's deal with that first. because that's a little bit easier. Now, explicit communication, you, your emails, your chat, your face-to-face -face conversations, um, your body language, those are things that you're actively doing, which is, you know, explicitly saying. And you have to be careful of that as well. Let's talk about your emails first. So a lot of people, because emails are so common, we get into the habit of just jumping on our emails and just start answering a question or just start responding, right? And we sometimes forget that there needs to be email etiquette, right? The way you portray yourself is coming across through your email. And so you always want to make sure you, 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 you portray yourself to be a polite and nice person, you know, and <laughs> that kind of helps with the underlying message of I am competent. Remember, everything you're doing, you're trying to convey the image of I am competent. So when you're sending your emails, even though there may be a chain of emails before yours, and you may just be responding quickly to an to a answer, I think it's always good to keep your salutations. So sometimes people don't even say hi. They just start answering right away. But it's always good to put in, hi, Bob, hi, John, hi, Sarah. And if you're sending it to a team, you're like, hello, team. Sometimes you can say, good morning, team. Good morning, John. Good morning, Sarah. You know, just start with something as, a, you know, to acknowledge the person, at least to call them out, to make them know that you are directly talking to them and to give them some kind of, you know, an introduction to, to, to the email, like just jumping right in and start talking about the topic, I think is a little bit crass. And we do it a lot and people don't really get offended by it. But remember, you are always trying to communicate something about yourself, right? So these are the small things that you can do that incrementally add up to communicating that you are competent and that you are a good worker, a nice person, etc. You want that good rapport. So keep your salutations in your email. Even if you're responding to something, Especially if you are starting an email, <laughs> you want to make sure you acknowledge the person and you say at least hi or good morning, good afternoon, etc. Some people go a little bit over and say, how are you doing and all that stuff. You don't really have to do that, but at least say hi. Start with that. And then if it's been a chain of communication coming up and it's now your turn to respond and there's been many responses before yours, it's always good to call out what you're responding to. So you say, hi, John, uh, I'm responding to the topic of blah, 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 or this is my answers to point number seven or, you know, so you call out what you're about to say is referring to so that the person doesn't have to go back and read everything to kind of figure out what you're responding to and try to make the connection themselves. Just make it easy. Just tell them what you're answering, what your answer is about. Right. And, and, and refer to whatever point number or bullet point or topic or whatever was in the body of the rest of the emails that was a part of the chain. That's true. The other thing, too, is to mind your tone in the email. Yes. So um, sometimes emails can come across to be very angry and very rude and accusatory. Right? They're trying to say, it's your fault. You did this. You didn't write the user story correctly. And that's why we built the system the way we did, because you told us to do it that way. And you were wrong. You didn't do your proper requirements. You know how it is. So sometimes the, the tone that comes across in the email is not a good one. So to make sure that you don't come across sounding really, really angry, you have to make sure you use words that calm the, the 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 tone down right so sometimes you just generalize so as i said you directly did not tell me you say you know our team needs to have so use a passive voice a lot 
our team needs to have the appropriate um, resources to what 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 whatever it is, right? So you're trying to try to make it generalized, use the passive voice a lot to calm it down. I'll give you a quick story. So we are working on this project, right? Very important project. You know, it's number one project for the company and it was seen to be great. We're going to build this mobile app. It's going to be great. It's going to include things that we didn't have before and it's going to make everybody's life easier and it's going to be fantastic. And then I was working on a piece of it and there are other people working on another piece of it. And I just felt like the direction of the project as a whole, I felt like it was not serving the users that we intended to serve. I felt like we were going down this rabbit hole and that's not what the users care about. So we're solving for these things, but the user really wants these things. And so we're just going to be spending time and effort and money building things that will not be used. Right. And I was very passionate about it. I really felt like this project was so huge that it was a part of me. I feel like I was personally invested in the, 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 the success of the project. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I was tying the success of the project with my success as a professional. I felt like if the project failed, it felt like I failed. And so I was so adamant that I wanted the project to be done well. And so when I saw them making decisions that would take the project down a road I know could not end well, I got really mad. <laughs> I was really, really livid. And so I sat at my desk and I was like, pum, 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 pum. you can hear the keys just making some loud noises in the office like, <laughs> Right? I was mad. And I wrote an angry email and I sent it off. And, you know, obviously everybody knew I was, you know, angry. Like, I don't really hide things. So it was obvious to everybody that I was really mad about this stuff. But in retrospect, I'm like, what was all of that about? That was not necessary. That was a waste of time and energy because you know what happened to the project? Senior, senior management decided to go a different direction and they put that project on hold. And so all the things that I was getting all upset about and all the things that I was, you know, so passionate about came to nothing. So what's the point? <laughs> Just remember you as a professional, you are going to be good regardless of whether or not the project becomes successful. You work as hard as you can to achieve the success. But if, if they cut the budget or they decide not to do the project and something happens to the project, that's not a reflection on you. That's not that you have failed. So you can't tie your success as a person, as a professional to the success of a project too tightly because they're, they're really independent, right? They're really independent. And you shouldn't feel like you're, you're not good enough because the project didn't, didn't, didn't pan out. So it's very dangerous and you shouldn't do it. And I would advise something else that you find an outlet for your, I would say, bent up emotions, right? So don't get angry at work to the point where you're sending angry emails and it's like madhouse, <laughs> right? Because it's not good for you. It's not good for your, your stress level. It's not good for your energy, your emotions. It's not good for the office. It's not good for your boss who's going to get that email. It's not good for your coworkers who are going to feel like you're blaming them. It's just all around it's not good it's bad energy it's bad energy and it's not right and so you don't want to communicate that okay because that's going to go in the i am incompetent bucket so you you just want to make sure that you do your best on the projects that you're working on but if you find that the project is going in a direction that you don't really like, you can voice your opinion, but don't feel personally tied to it. You're not responsible for that. Okay. So if it really bothers you when you leave work, go for a run, right? Find an outlet. If you like to, I don't know, rock climbing, go do some rock climbing on the weekend. If you like to sing, go to karaoke. I mean, do something that can help you release the energy that you would have spent being angry because it's not worth it, right? So in your communication, do not send angry emails. If you're angry when you wrote the email, put it, save it, 
And when you're not angry, read it again and see if it's too angry and then try to make the voice passive. Don't be pointing fingers in your email. Just be passive, be um, neutral as much as you can. Get your point across without accusing people. Get your point across without, um, without the words that would be upsetting to the person reading it. Even if they are wrong, even if you are completely correct, you know, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it, right? So you put your foot down where you need to. I'm not saying you're going to be like wimpy, wimpy, and everybody walk all over you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're going to be firm and assertive, but you're not going to insult people and you're not going to be angry at people and be seen to be an angry person. You're not going to communicate anger across your emails. That's the point of the communication. Now, another thing I want to talk about is um, communicating via body language, right? So you might go to a meeting. You're in the meeting and you're on your, well, everybody knows you're not supposed to be on your phone in a meeting, right? But sometimes we're all casual. You check your phone, you check it, you put it down, you pay attention to the meeting. Then you check it again, you put it down, you pay attention to the meeting. Sometimes you might not think that this is being noticed, but it could be. And it's communicating to somebody else that there's something else that's taking your attention. So please be aware of that and do not communicate that. So if you're in a meeting, put your phone down, pay attention. I mean, if it's like an emergency for your child or something really important, I'm not saying you're going to ignore it, but you're not going to be checking your Facebook in the meeting, right? So you got to be conscious of that kind of stuff. Also, your body language. So you're in the meeting and you're like this, slumped down. You know, sometimes it's cool because you could be in a very casual meeting where everybody's just chilling out, relaxing, and you're coming up with ideas and you're just like, man, you know, so sometimes it's cool, but there are times when you have to be more, you know, alert, right? So you just have to know your culture, knowing the people that you're working with and know what you can and cannot do. Other things are, if you have a meeting with someone and they keep canceling the meeting, they cancel the reschedule, they cancel the reschedule. It sends the message that your time is not important. So if you have a meeting with someone and you keep canceling and rescheduling and canceling and rescheduling it, and you know, you might not see anything wrong with that, but you're communicating something by doing that. You're saying that the person's time is not as important as something else that you have to do. Right? So just be careful of that as well. Yeah, so those are some of the things I think you should be aware of in your communication. Um, again, as a business analyst, one of the main ways that we communicate is via our requirements and via our user stories, right? So we have to tell the development team what we want them to build. And we have to be clear in what we say so that they know exactly what the expected results are. So I have a video on documentation skills where I get more into some of the kind of techniques that you can use to make to improve your documentation skills. But as a part of that, the soft skill is being able to, to, um, to communicate. And you're communicating via your document or via user stories. So that communication is kind of more structured because you know the format to write a user story, you know the format to write a, uh, a requirement, but the communication would need to be when you are explaining this to the development team, to the people who care about it, to the, to the stakeholders, to make sure that you, you convey the message clearly. And that's just going to come from knowing the domain, from you know dominating the content. There is no real secret to this. It's just being able to use the right words to convey what you're trying to convey. A lot of it comes with practice, but you have to be very good at making sure that what you're trying to explain is being explained. And you can tell when you're communicating effectively because people might be more alert looking at you or they look at you like, huh? You know, so <clears throat> for example, I have a problem where I'm, st I'm talking and I trail off. Like I start loud or, or, or I start with a higher pitch and then I would trail right off. So I'm, I know that and I'm conscious of that. So what I do is I try to keep my pitch high even though it's not natural. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm talking about something and I try to just keep the same um, volume in my voice because I know I have a natural tendency to trail off. And that 
disrupts the communication because they ask me, what did you say? I didn't hear the last part. You know what I mean? So I have to repeat the ending because they didn't hear it. And then I'm Jamaican. I'm in the U.S. I have an accent. So I have to make sure that I am more purposeful in what I'm saying because I have to fight against all of these things, right? So just be aware of the things that you struggle with. Um, if you have a lisp, if you um, tend to talk fast, if you tend to, I don't know, um, talk too slow or you tend to, to, to rant. <laughs> Some people like to rant a lot. So you know what your weaknesses are. And because you know the weaknesses, you're going to have to find ways to mitigate against that right, in your communication. Because you have to be clear, you have to get to the point quickly. And you have to make sure you make the best use of both your time and the people at work that you're communicating with. So that's it. So those are the explicit ways in which you're communicating. Of course, I didn't talk about chat. I mean, chat is more casual. So you might just send a quick chat to someone and they expect, you expect them to respond to you right away. And you're not really being very um, conscious or formal in the way you're chatting you're just talking about stuff and that's fine but also remember you're still on the corporate network right so even though you can chat and it's private between you and the person sometimes still maintain certain levels of etiquette where you don't say certain things don't be cursing out on the chat don't be using expletives you know there are just certain things that even when you're in a comfortable setting as long as you're dealing with work related items, as long as you're dealing with coworkers, you are still communicating something about yourself in a work setting. If you're standing at the water cooler and you're talking about the game or something cool, that's fine. Nothing's wrong with that. And you may have communicated to the other person that you are outgoing and you love sports and all that stuff. That's great. But always remember you're at work. And you still have to maintain a certain level of, um, I would say, composure. And your communication still has to end up in, I am competent, right? So you're not going to say, boy, I was at work <clears throat> so sleepy that I couldn't even finish the project. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? I couldn't prepare for the meeting. It's the truth. But do you really want to communicate that? I mean, why would you communicate that? That's just adding a dent into your armor of being competent so it doesn't make sense i'm saying the better thing to do is even if you're just being casual and talking about i don't know fruits and vegetables and your garden and your children or something casual you still want to maintain that level of um, composure and you still want to communicate things that are adding value to you as a person because everything you communicate tells something about yourself right and you want that thing to be always in a positive light so those are the ways that you can <laughs> communicate explicitly and again in terms of implicit there are things that you say that people walk away feeling either of the three things either they feel that like you're competent you're not competent or you need something to be competent so if you have a project you're working directly on a project and you go to your boss you start telling them about um <clears throat> why the project is going to fail and why the project is not going to work out well and why you can't do the work. You're just telling the person that you are incompetent. That's all you're telling them. And that's not good. If you go to them and you say, hey, you know, for this to be the best, we would need to get two, three resources that can be able to do this and this and this and this. Then you're telling them that you don't have enough, you know, you don't have what you need to be competent. That's a different scenario from saying, hey, you can't get this done. So you have to be very careful how you word what you're saying, because if you don't word it properly, you can turn, I need more resources to be competent into I am incompetent by myself. And you don't want to do that. So just always be conscious. I wish I had more concrete examples for you. I don't right now. And we're about out of time. I hope this video was useful in some way. I hope that you can take some benefit from it. And remember, I don't have enough subscribers. Yeah, like I don't have enough subscribers. So if you watch the video and you like it, just subscribe. I mean, I don't see why you can't just click the button that says subscribe and show me that, you know, you support what I'm doing. I mean, that's not hard. So please subscribe because I need more subscribers. 
Thank you. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>